celebrate the arts. It's Pam time. Oh
everybody, it's Pam Murphy, and hopefully you'll like country. Not only country, but the country, as in Cooperstown, New York. I'm going to have a little tour of going up there, so I hope you enjoy it. Now you think of the birthplace of baseball, the National Baseball Hall of Fame, so we're going to get to see that. But not only that up there, there's all kinds of wonderful things. I'm going up to see my mom and dad, Wild Bill and Kathy, up at the Barracks Tree Farm. So let's give a shout out to everybody up there, my relatives up in Cooperstown. But I'm also going to be seeing some of the other great things that they have to offer there in Cooperstown. The Fenimore House, the National Farmers Mu Museum, so we're going to get to see those. Some great things when you, if you have a chance to go up to see Cooperstown, but also the beautiful, beautiful lake at Seago Lake when you're up there. So we're also going to get a chance to see the Glimmerglass Opera House, and that's what I'm most excited about. So I'm bringing my camera along. Enjoy! Get a glimpse of Cooperstown, New York. It's Pam time. Alright, so we're at Double Day Parking Field. They're in front of the Cooperstown Chamber of Commerce information on the Day of Hall of Fame. Jessica Murray. Hi. Alright, we're going to head over to the field real quick. at the Double Day Field right now, parking lot. Oh, look at this. There we go. I'm going to go up a little bit so I can get a good shot. So, um, Grandpa used to live over there. Oh, yeah? uh, I think it was the greenhouse. And when he was a little kid, he was one of the original Bat Boys. And um, he used to go get all the balls that were hit out there. They used to sit on the roof and watch the games. And here's the, the Hall of Fame. Actually, this is Double Day Field. Here's the dugout. Beautiful. Here, uh, uh, hundred bucks to wear it. Yeah. There you go. Here we go. There's the Hall of Fame. from the railroad station and that is where the old old timers used to come in on the estate and the train favorite thing at the bakery? Black and white cookies, apple dumplings, chocolate croissants. Oh, they're all so good. Main Street. Wow, it's packed already. Wow. <laughs> the Cooper Inn is another great place to stay. Yeah, it's usually out. 
absolutely packed. You can't even get in there unless you have VIP passes. You have to wear the lanyard all the time to get in. You can see it right there. You keep going up, you're going to see the James Benamore house. the Fenimore Art Museum, open daily, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., right next to the golf course. Well, there is the totem pole, just to your left. There it is. Oh, yeah. Fenimore Art Museum. everybody and welcome to Cooperstown. We're standing in front of the Haida Totem Pole in front of the Fenimar Art Museum and it's absolutely beautiful, beautiful. open daily from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So while you're down here visiting and going to the National Baseball Hall of Fame, you can also come here. And right next door, you can see some of the people anxiously waiting for the Hall of Famers who come and play golf. 
on the golf course on Otsego Lake, which is right next to the Farmer's Museum down there. I don't know if you can see it. So you can go visit that. That's all right next to each other. We're at the Fenimore Art Museum. And right now we're looking at the Farmer's Museum. Beautiful. Get a chance to get a little bit of piece of history up here as well. While you're out getting some baseball history and getting some autographs. So we're at Clinton Dam and Council Rock. And this Council Rock, hopefully you can see this, it's a famous meeting place of the Indians. Of course, this is the place that inspired James Fenimore Cooper to write his book, Deerslayer. Here's Clinton's Dam. Here's the steps to go down. And then if you look way out there, you'll see Kingfisher Tower, which was commissioned during the Depression era. Let's see if I can get it, I don't know if I can. To give jobs to people up here who are hungry and starving. There we go, it's out there. This is Otsiga Lake. Hey everybody, it's Pam Murphy and I'm on the tip of Otsiga Lake. Up there's Kingfisher Tower. You can see off in the distance. And then I'm going to have you look over here to Council Rock, which is where the Indians used to come and meet. Over here, I'll show you where that is. There's an actual plaque in the rock. There we
if you look around the lake where we were, over there is the golf course. Very, very end is Glimmerglass Beach State Park you can go to. It's the very, very end of the lake. is orchestration. A lot of musicals are not orchestrated, most musicals, by the composer, unlike opera closing, and you need orchestrators orchestrating his music. Um, Oklahoma was, was orchestrated by Martin Russell Bennett, one of the great, great geniuses of the American musical theater. Um, and he orchestrated the first two songs of Carousel. He orchestrated the Carousel Waltz, and he orchestrated uh, Mr. Snow. And then he got really busy with his advertising business and couldn't keep up with the show. And it's crazy to think that in our industry, even a genius at the top of his form sometimes needs a day job, and this, this guy did. So Don Walker took over, who's, who's equally genius. And Richard Rodgers' instruction to Don Walker and his team was, Carousel is not Okay, so behind here is where the dressing rooms are and the warming up area. You can hear the people getting ready. What do you mean by that? And you can sit inside for free and watch them change everything on the stage. Oh wow, for that's the nice. evening's performance. So this is the back side of Glimmerglass Opera House. You got your stage crew out here before the show, having fun playing frisbee. Chilling in their black garb, getting ready to go. <laughs> She's the one who's working hard. <laughs> That's probably one of your actors right there coming in. Where are we? Oh, we are at the Glimmerglass Opera. We're going to see the musical Carousel, which is something new they've started. They're including a musical every summer along with the traditional operas. They're all done in repertoire. You can come up for the weekend and see all four operas from That's July nice. to August. Nice. <laughs> so we're up, up, we're the, what is our seats? We're upper we're level. Upper level, left balcony. Nice. And the side walls are open. This is beautiful.
So now we're going to watch some music from some teenagers that came and did a camp, a Broadway camp, at the Hudson Valley Conservatory's New Rose Theater. And the teachers were Dee Kelly, Tarita Red, and Lauren O'Connell. And these kids worked for three weeks, and then of course they put a show on, and the show is called Legally Blonde. So enjoy some of the highlights that I've got for you, and they're coming straight to you from the New Rose Theater. So enjoy. Are you ready? I don't know how. Do we scare the crap out of me? Oh, Paula, that's okay. Shame on that fear and tell yourself you're a strong, independent woman that needs to be reunited with her dog. Anyone that bakes her dog a birthday cake deserves nothing less. <laughs> it is shaped like a bone, and that devotion cannot be ignored. What? Oh, not you again, Paula. You, 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 you,
my god, Emmett, is that you? I was looking shopping. Oh, you look sharp. Pop one up for Elle. <laughs> <laughs> In day three of the Brooke Wyndham murder trial, D.A. Joyce Riley has been grilling Nikos Argitakos, Miss Wyndham's school white, all morning. The lawyers could get dicey. Let's hope the defense packed their floaties. Katie? community. So tap into the performing arts in your area. This is Pam Murphy. Goodbye and good night.